Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video we will be seeing how we can host a web application using AWS Amplify. So we will be using an Angular based application but the process remains same for any other frameworks like React or Vue.js as well. So with that out of the way, let's get this started. Okay, so before going further down the video, I am assuming that you already have your code hosted in one of the online repositories like GitHub or Bitbucket or any of such services. So as of now, my code is there in GitHub and we'll be using a particular repository called Angular Deploy App. So this is basically just a sample application. It's just a boilerplate of an Angular application. It doesn't have any other code apart from the basic template given by Angular itself. So I've already created another video wherein we've hosted this in another service called Render. And in this particular video, we'll be doing it through Amplify as well. So I will be using this. So now let's open a new tab and let's search for AWS Amplify. Open the first link. So here on the landing page, they have specified that AWS Amplify can be used for creating and deploying full stack web as well as mobile applications. So you can either build your application directly on AWS Amplify or you can just directly host your already pre-built application. In this case, we'll be hosting our service, right? So let's click on this. If you haven't created an account with AWS as of yet, then please quickly do that. Once you have created that, you'll be landing on your console page. So as of now, I've landed on the AWS Amplify dashboard, but if you have landed on the actual AWS dashboard, what you can do is that you can click on services or you can directly go to the search bar and search for Amplify. So this is the AWS Amplify, right? So once you click on that, you'll be landing on this particular page and now you can click on get started. So as you can see, they've given us two options. Either we can build an application using AWS Amplify Studio, or you can host our existing application using the hosting service. So they are actually giving as of now, I guess React, View, and JS applications, but Angular is also supported. So let's click on get started. All right, so now here you have to select the online service which you have to use for hosting your code. My code is present in GitHub, but if you have it on Bitbucket, GitLab, or AWS code commit, you can directly link it there. And if you don't have your code on any of the services and you have it somewhere in your local system, then you can go ahead with this particular option. So I'll click on GitHub and I'll click on continue. So as you can see, Amplify is trying to access my GitHub account. So I'll be authorizing that. So now it's asking me whether AWS Amplify has to be installed on all the repositories or you want it specifically for few repositories. In this case, I'll be giving access to only one repository. That is my Angular deployment one. So I'll select that particular repository and then click on install and authorize. All right, so now once that is done, you have to select the repository. And as of now, when I click on the drop down, there is only one repository because that is the only repository we've given access to. So from this, I'll select the branch. So let's go back. I'll be selecting the main branch. So let's click on main and I'll just leave the remaining as it is. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so now let's click on next. Alright, so once that is done, it's going to give us few other options like specifying the name of this application and leave the default as it is. Apart from that, there is also a build and test settings. Basically, this is just a YAML file wherein some of the features have already been predefined by Amplify. So what Amplify has done is that it has identified that our application is a NPM based application. So it has written the pre-built as well as the build scripts. So the pre-built option is saying run the npm ci and it's going to install the packages then once the dependencies have been installed run the build command once that is done set the base directory to your dist slash your application name then copy all those files that is what's happening here now so i guess it's adding the modules to cache so these are the basic things that are defined here but what i'll do is i'll change this and in here i'll just remove this from ci to i so basically i'll just do npm install that is npm i I'll not do the CI, uh, basically CI is used in server side scripts and all, but sometimes it's causing issues in some build versions of NPM, that is not, so I'll not be going ahead with CI. Now, apart from that, you also have some advanced options or settings. Uh, you can define a build image as well, if you already have your Docker link set up, or let's say you have some environment variables inside your code. So in most of the cases wherein you have, let's say a full stack application, you will definitely link to a backend, right? Something related to MongoDB or SQL. In most of the scenarios, you will have a secret key present inside your code. So ideally you would keep that inside a .env file. That is, you will be creating a variable and for that variable, you'll be assigning the particular string. That is a secret key. Now you have defined that inside of a .env file. Most of the scenarios, what you do is that you will 
add that dot env file directly onto the service and in the server itself but in this case since you cannot directly access the server what you can do is that you can define your environment keys here so you can define the key and the value similar to how you have defined inside the dot env file you can add multiple environment variables as well and once you have done with that you can access them similar to how you were accessing them previously okay so you can search it up on how you can access this using the variables and all but i guess it's going to remain same so i'll just leave all the remaining as it is and click on next so this is the final page where you'll be seeing all the things at once so i'll just click on save and deploy all right so now what it's doing is that it's actually started the process for building the application so right now it is provisioning a server for this particular angular application to be built once that is done the build process will start and once the build is successful it's going to deploy that onto a particular server but once that is done you can click on this and that's going to open the website for you to view but let's say that's not working and also let's say you have your own custom domain what you can do is that you can click on the left hand side menu and here you can go to domain management and you can add your own domain as well okay so you have let's say some domain from godaddy or big rock or something of such then you can add that here Apart from that, you also have your Amplify Studio settings, you have your general settings, that is the repository which is, which is linked to and the branch name and all. And then you have your build settings wherein you can actually go and edit the YAML file which is, you know, which is what we previously edited as well. Apart from that, you can set up custom webhooks as well. And these are the image settings. You also have your notifications, then environment variables. So here, if you had some environment variables, they'll be showing. And you can add few more as well. You also have your monitoring and some other things like redirects and rewrites as well. So once your code is deployed and people are coming to the website, then the data will be populated and you'll be able to see the metrics as well. So now let's go back and see where it is. All right, so it seems like the deployment is done. Let's click on this. All right, so it is saying that the deployment was completed. Let's go to the build and let's see the front end part. Yep, seems like all the packages were installed as well. All right, so seems like our code was successfully deployed onto AWS Amplify and once the server is correctly running and it's up, then you can view your application as well. And one more thing to note here is that as I've said previously, in most of the scenarios, you'll be keeping your environment variables inside a .env file. In most of the scenarios, what you do is that you don't push your .env to your online repositories like GitHub or, or any of the other services but you have to keep the environment file inside your code as well right because if that file is not there in your code then your application will not be able to actually render correctly right so for that what you can do is that you can connect to your online server as well in the left bottom you can see that there is one thing called as cloud shell so basically this is the server that was provisioned for us to use you can actually type the commands here to copy that file over to this particular server and if you don't want to do it through the command line, I guess you also have the option to upload a file. Yeah, seems like you can upload a file as well. But I don't know whether that will upload that file to the server itself directly or whether that will be uploading a script only. Yeah, you can tinker around with this and see whether it's, you know, meeting your particular needs or not. As of now, uh, most of the AWS Amplify settings are free. I guess there is a free trial for that as well. But once you're past that, then you might need to pay based on the usage, right? So based on the customers that are coming to your server or the website, the payment will be based on that, right? So you can tinker around with this for testing your application and seeing how it's gonna look on the actual server as well. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.